the true definition of an A player is someone who's a team player, somebody who is a real go-getter and is always looking for how they can contribute to better the team and the team's goals. They're going to be your top performers. They're going to be the ones who are great communicators. They keep the team informed of what they're doing. So they're not hunkered down in their silo trying to outperform everybody else. That's not an A player. An A player is that collaborative team member who's communicative and who also wants to see other team members succeed and set them up for success. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Hi there. Welcome to the Profit by Design podcast. Today, I am joined by Caitlin Beaver, who is our success concierge at Tap the Potential. And she also has a strong background in workforce development. And the topic we are going to dive into are the current workforce trends that small business owners need to be aware of to hire A players for your teams. I'm your host, Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the author of the How to Hire the Best series. I'm passionate about helping small business owners hire A players. Caitlin on our team is so excited and exuberant to join me in teaching the How to Hire the Best course. And she's bringing her background in workforce development and just the awareness of current trends into the course. So we thought it would be really fun to have her on the podcast here to talk about these trends and what she's seen. Kaylin has such a unique background because not only does she have a workforce development background, she also has a very strong marketing background. And I think that is key to knowing how to attract A players in your business is really thinking about your recruiting from that marketing perspective and combining that with the knowledge of what A players are looking for and then what the workforce trends are. So we're bringing it all together here for you today on the podcast. So Caitlin, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I have been a fangirl of the podcast for years now. So it is just so incredible to be here um, with you and also just to share some of our insights with the listeners. Absolutely. So let's bring our listeners up to speed. Share a little bit about your background in workforce development. So I have been in the workforce development industry for three years now. Um, In a very short time, I transitioned from being a career navigator where I was helping people with a background find rewarding career opportunities to our local organization's first digital media producer, AKA marketing expert. And this experience has been so transformative for me. Um, I've always had a servant heart and interest in helping others, but it really showed me the impact our careers have on our lives. It's an integral part of who we are. And for some, it can be life-changing to find a rewarding opportunity. So what I learned through my experience with workforce development is, you know, these job opportunities and these career pathways not only impact the individual, but it also impacts the families that they have at home, the companies that they're working for to help them grow and succeed, and ultimately the communities that they live in. 
Yeah, that is so true. And we really believe in that at Tap the Potential. And we've seen it because when our small business owners are hiring A players in their businesses, they're giving opportunities to those A players that did not previously exist. And it changes the A player's life. It changes their family's life. And it has this effect in the community, a very positive effect in the community. And so we get the joy at Tap the Potential of watching small business owners grow their businesses because we we help them remove one of the biggest roadblocks to growth, which is hiring A players. And so I think we should just dive right into that right now. And I want to say at the beginning that we're going to make this a two-part series because we have so much to share with you around understanding the workforce trends when it comes to hiring A players and the gaps that exist and how we at Tap the Potential help our business owners bridge those gaps to become an employer of choice for the A players they want to attract. And we have the How to Hire the Best course coming up. And I think one of the things that really excites me about this next round of the How to Hire the Best course is that we are right on top of workforce trends and what we're teaching, and we're continually updating the course to reflect that. So you're getting the latest and greatest, and we'll talk more about the course in a little bit. But let's just start off by, I want to clarify, Caitlin, for everyone, what an A player is, because I think sometimes people think of A players as like hardcore, competitive, cutthroat team members. That is not an A player. (laughs) A players can be very hardcore with respect to wanting to be the best themselves and wanting to learn and grow. But the true definition of an A player is someone who's a team player, somebody who is a real go-getter and is always looking for how they can contribute to better the team and the team's goals. They're going to be your top performers. They're going to be the ones who are great communicators. They keep the team informed of what they're doing. So they're not hunkered down in their silo trying to outperform everybody else. That's not an A player. An A player is that collaborative team member who's communicative and who also wants to see other team members succeed and set them up for success. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about A players. So Caitlin, What are some of the things that A players are looking for in the workforce currently? For growth opportunities, um, you know, A players have this motivation to really, like you said, support their team and they have this greater mission at play and they really want to find purpose in the work that they're doing. And to that end, they want to know what their career pathway is. They want to know what their growth opportunity can look like within your company to really help it grow. And they want to innovate. They want to try new things. And, you know, something that's so interesting about A players is that we're okay with failing. We're okay with failing as long as we fail forward and we have the safety net of our team to really cheer us on and say, gosh, well, what did we learn from that failure? What did we learn to push us forward? And those are just a few of the things that can really, I think, set an A player's experience apart. And outside of that, I think it's really having touch points with our leaders. You know, we want to check in with you. We want to not just hear the constructive feedback, but we really want to be able to hear about your vision for the company. We want to know where we're growing together. And I think that those opportunities to work with our leadership or with other team members and check in with them is a great chance to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, in the How to Hire the Best course, we teach that you want to have regular one-to-ones with your team members. And I always qualify that. And I say, you don't need to do one-to-ones with all of your team members. You really need to be doing them with your A players, though, very intentionally. Because, so here's something else I've learned, is that if we teach business owners in the How to Hire the Best course, how to hire these A players, and they bring them on their team, and then they don't have regular meetings with them, those A players run amok really quickly because they have all this energy. (laughs) And if you're not guiding them and giving them a clear direction and a vision, and here's our goals, and here's your strengths, and here's where they align, those A players, they need to use their energy, and they need to grow and learn, and they will go and do it, but it won't necessarily be in alignment with the company's vision. And that can be a source where a lot of frustration gets created 
unnecessarily. So the best way to manage all of that is to be very intentional that you have ongoing weekly or every other week meetings with your A players going over their expectations and what specifically their role is. This is something that I see a lot of confusion around for team members because A players are really good at a lot of things. And when they come into a business, that small business owner says, oh my gosh, I can use you here and I can use you there and over there. And before you know it, the A player is so scattered, they don't know what's expected of them. And so we need to be able to, you know, get clarity for ourselves. And this is what we teach in the How to Have the Best course is how to have that clarity. But when we're meeting every week with our A players, we're learning about what their goals are and what matters to them. And that's where that mentorship really becomes so valuable that I think A players are very much seeking right now. Caitlin, what do you, what's your experience with that? I think you touched on a couple of things that are so important. And I think for small business owners and leaders, it's really important for you to understand the impact of those one-to-ones for you as well. And I think when you really understand what growth opportunities they have professionally and personally, you're able to better align their career trajectory and your eyes might open. You might say, whoa, I didn't know you had that goal. I didn't know that you wanted to work towards this or that something really energized you outside of the scope of your work. So I think it really gives that opportunity for the business owner or the leader to say, wow, I have a team member who might be interested in other things and other areas that can really help grow the business. And personally, in my experience with Tap the Potential, you know, we have this A player development plan. And in the A player development plan, I'm focused very specifically on my professional goals for Tap the Potential, but also my personal goals. And I'm putting in there all of these different dreams that I have for myself and different areas of my life that I really want to be able to focus on. And I'm realizing and recognizing that there are people on our team who can help me do that. And so now I have this more investment in your vision and where you're trying to take tap the potential. And I think that that's what your A players are going to find. When you work with them on their own development, there becomes this trust and this relationship that you're building. And it's an opportunity for you to see them and recognize them. But also on the flip side, you get to see there might be some other areas of growth in your business that you may not have seen before. And you really get to support them and, you know, just to continue to build that relationship with which goes such a long way. Yeah. You know, when I think about that, it's so true that when A players come in, they have a fresh perspective on the business. And especially as we, the business owners, educate our A players about the sweet spot of the business and the vision and what we're trying to accomplish. It can be such a breath of fresh air to hear from the A players on the team. You know, here are some ideas about how to go about doing that. And it doesn't have to be as complicated maybe as you were making it, or here's a shorter path to get there or a more impactful path to get there. And, you know, that just aligns with what we're seeing in the workforce with respect to the growth opportunities that A players are looking for. So how cool is it for an A player to come into the business and to know the sweet spot? And then because they know the sweet spot of the business, they identify their own growth opportunities because they understand who the top clients are and how the business is trying to serve them. And just to give some data to back this up, in a recent LinkedIn survey found that 87% of millennials rate professional growth and development opportunities is important to them in a job. So this is really key. And Gallup has found that employees who feel they have opportunities to learn and grow are going to be much more engaged and less likely to leave their jobs. Glassdoor found that 76% of employees said they would be more likely to stay with a current employer if they see opportunities for growth. And a study by Randstad found 
that 91% of employees view training and development as important to their career. So we cannot emphasize enough how it's not just about getting out there and hiring those A players. You really need to be thoughtful about how you're going to retain them. And one of the reasons that I started working on A player development plans to share with business owners is because I saw business owners hiring A players because they're using what I teach in the How to Hire the Best course to get out there and get those A players. But then they may lose those A players in a year or two. And that's a significant investment that's been made in bringing them on the team. But then if they leave, then you're starting all over again to hire and replace them, which is small businesses just cannot afford those kinds of turnover costs that are involved there. And so what I really became aware of is not only do I need to be helping you, like in the How to Hire the Best course, how to hire those A players, but I also need to be giving you tools to help retain them. Because A players move from one opportunity to the next. That's a key piece to know about their psychology. And that's how we teach you to attract them in the How to Hire the Best course is to position yourself as the next best opportunity for those eight players. But you need to know once they're on your team, that's exactly how you might lose them if you don't invest in developing them. And Caitlin, in my research with entrepreneurs, what I'm finding is that nine out of 10 entrepreneurs are putting no emphasis on A player development, team development, and retention of A players. So this, to me, seems like it's a huge gap. And in terms of what we do at Tap the Potential in helping business owners take their lives back from their business, I think if we can get better and better at helping entrepreneurs retain their A players that they've gotten, it positions them to be profitable and it positions them to grow with a lot of ease versus that revolving door of A players in their business. Totally agree. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you said about failing forward and failing faster and what that means for A players, because I think there's an interesting psychology there. Some A players tend to be very interested in doing things right and doing things well. And so, but they also are much more willing to try things out. So how do we strike that balance in a company to support our A players? What are your thoughts on that? Such a good question. And I think it's all about taking that mindset of being a learner. I think that failing is just teaching you how to learn because you may innovate and you may try new things and five out of 10 of those things may not work, but you're learning how to then streamline your systems, your people, the way that you're serving customers better. And I think that if we don't really focus on failing forward and finding ways to continue to learn, then we won't be open to these new perspectives and being able to evolve with all of the changes that we're seeing, not just in our topics today about workforce development, but really about anything. So I think that if you can teach your A players, if you can reframe in their mind that you're just there to learn and you're there to grow together and catch each other, I think that you're going to really open your mind to all different kinds of possibilities in your business. I think that's a really great way to handle that. And, you know, the other thing that I'm aware of as you're describing that is that so many of our team members come to us in business having had bad experiences with previous employers who, when they made a mistake, the supervisor or the boss came down on them. And so they may be as good as they are, they may be very hesitant to take the lead initially and and go out there and do things on their own. They may continually come back to you looking for guidance, but the more you reassure and say, no, no, you go try it. And if it doesn't work, then we'll figure it out together. And we'll come back and we'll look at which piece worked and what didn't work and what did we learn from this and how can we make it better going into the future. So let's talk now about what are some of the trends in workforce development that small business owners should be aware of? So what are the trends, Caitlin? So just some that come to mind is, of course, something that we've been talking about a lot amidst the pandemic is remote work and being able to offer more flexible options for people. And although we understand that not every small business owner can offer those opportunities, there's lots of ways to create more flexible work arrangements. 
for the people that are working for you. And, you know, we talk a lot about burnout now. We talk a lot about our mental well-being. And so it's so important to show people how much you care because they are full humans coming to work. <laughs> and so it's so important that you are showing them through your practices and your interactions, your engagements with them that really recognize the way that they're showing up and you're cheering them on to make sure that they have what they need to be successful in their positions. We're also seeing focuses on skill development. I mean, there are so many different things that are evolving in the workplace and we're learning that you need lifelong learners because every market is always changing. So you have to be able to develop, really hone in on skills that your A players are interested in and be able to, to help them, you know, really navigate what that looks like for your company. Yeah, you know, just a prime example of that that I think most of us can re relate to recently is chat GPT. That has just come on the scene in the last month or two in a big way. And we're seeing so many ways that it can make jobs easier. And that's a skill to be developed for your A players and, and to learn how to use it effectively as a tool in the business to make workflow easier. But, you know, when I think about skill development, you know, there's some a study by PwC that says 79% of CEOs are concerned about the availability of key skills needed. And I hear this a lot from small business owners that it is so hard to hire people with the skills that are needed for a particular role. And so what I've found works best for small business owners is to really build a um, accountability or a role chart where you're filling the frontline positions from the outside, and then you're actively working to move your team members up and develop their skills. So if you can hire A players at entry level and bring them in, and you have a solid training plan in place to move them up through the company, number one, you're going to retain A players. It also allows you to hire in a way that allows the business to stay profitable. So if you're hiring entry level, and then and you're providing clear training and expectations, you can move them up and you can pay as they improve their skill set. And all of this can be tracked on an A player development plan. And so the team member knows a trajectory and knows what's expected and what they can expect. And this allows you to not have to be so focused on hiring for skills because it's just going to become harder and harder to do that as we go. Caitlin, what else are you aware of? You mentioned flexible work arrangements. And I know in office jobs, sometimes that's much easier to make those flexible. And I know we have a lot of people in the trades who listen and in construction and they have people out in the field and they're probably thinking, I wonder how we can create flexibility in that way. Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. Um, some of the most in-demand industries are those that may find it challenging to be able to offer remote work options, but there's all different kinds of alternatives. You know, one that comes to mind is looking at your shifts that you're offering. So if you are in construction and you know that there are opportunities for people to work very specific times and days of the week and in rotation, I think that even something like that could be so helpful because that's an opportunity for people to be able to show up at their best when they're at the job and also show up for their families at home and really have more structure around what that could look like. Yeah. And I think the place that you start with that is by having conversations with your team members from the perspective of if you could create your ideal schedule, you know, we, we need you a certain number of hours per week, but if you could create your ideal schedule, what would it be? And you're not creating an expectation that you're going to honor that ideal schedule. It may not be possible to do it for everyone, but it'll give you a sense of what's in your team members' minds and what they really want. And I think just those conversations with your A players around if we're going to create a really good environment for you here, we're going to create a great place to work for you. What's involved? What's included? And that includes what's your ideal schedule? If you could wave a magic wand and you were working a certain number of hours, when would you have those hours be? And then you can involve them even in saying, okay, Joe said he wants to work these hours. Jim said he wants to work these hours. John wants to work these hours. 
help me figure out how do we make this work and still get things done in a timely fashion so we meet our deadlines, you can involve, when you have a players, you can involve them in figuring it out. And then they have ownership and buy-in into the schedule that's being created. The other thing that I find is business owners have a really unique opportunity to position themselves as different in their client and customer minds when they talk about being an employer of choice for A players and how they are setting their business up to be a mentally healthy work environment and paying attention to the needs of the team members so that they can thrive. Clients and customers get excited about that. They want to support a business that is taking care of team members. So that can even become a part of your unique employer branding. And we have clients at Tap the Potential who do that. We do it at Tap the Potential. We believe work supports life, not the other way around. Our clients know that. Our clients come to us because they want to be able to build a business like that. And so, you know, one of the things that we teach in the How to Have the Best course is that like attracts like. When we identify our core values and our immutable laws, and we incorporate those in our employer branding and our overall branding, we will attract more people who hold those similar values. And that's just a big part of what makes doing business easier. So we have just been covering a lot of ground here in part one of this two-part series. We've talked about what A players are looking for in the workplace. We've talked about the trends in workforce development that you need to be aware of. And I wanna encourage you to come back for part two, where we really dig into what are the gaps? Now that we know the trends, what are the gaps? What are What is missing that we as small business owners can be aware of? And I actually have some creative solutions for bridging those gaps that work for a small business. So we'll be getting into that in part two. And we'll also be talking about how you can position yourself as an employer of choice to attract a player. So come back next week for part two. And in the meantime, I want to acknowledge to the business owners listening to this, we know you're busy and you're hearing this and you're all fired up. You're like, yeah, I want to be that employer of choice. And then your next thought is, how am I going to find time for that? And like, where do I make time with all the other things that I'm juggling? And so what I want to share with you is that in the How to Hire the Best course, I have broken this up for you in small bite sized bits so that over the course of five weeks, you can take one action step forward that builds on another, that builds on another. And before you know it, in five weeks time, in the midst of your busy life and busy schedule, you have created your how to hire the best system in your business. You are attract, you have that system for attracting A players. So the How to Hire the Best course is coming up again. The registration deadline is Friday, April 28th. So, but don't wait to the deadline to sign up. Go ahead and sign up now, commit to it. Say, you know what? I'm gonna be that employer of choice. I want these A players on my team because I understand how they're going to impact my profitability. And so when you come into the How to Hire the Best course, we have video modules so you can watch the course material on your own time. They're short videos. You need to plan to spend about an hour to an hour and a half each week watching videos. And then each video ends with a move forward action step. And when you complete 90% of your move forward action steps, we will bring you in on the podcast and feature you in our great place to work spotlight at Tap the Potential. So we're confident in doing that because we're teaching you how to be an employer of choice by as you go through the course. The action steps you're taking are setting you up to be that employer of choice, to be that great place to work. And then you get to come on the podcast and talk about what you're doing to be a great place for A players to work. Well, that gives you a video and it gives you an audio recording. You can put that out in your social Social. It can go on your careers page and it's third party verification that you are indeed a great place to work. We give you a logo that says that. And then not only that, but you also come away with a solid job ad that is written very specifically to attract A players. And what we find about these job ads is the way we teach you to write them in the How to Hire the Best course is we weed out a lot of people who would normally apply. You're not dealing with them. So there's fewer applications that you're looking through. You have fewer people to interview because I teach you how to write this job ad that specifically speaks to those A players. So you're not having 
people blanket resume and send you applications and they're not a good fit and you have to sort through all that, that all goes away. I teach you some inside tricks as to how to filter really fast with that job ad. And then even as you go through the interview process, I show you, you know, where, what to ask in the interview, how to conduct the interview, the step by step. I give you resources for that and tools. So your confidence in your ability to hire is going to go through the roof. But the other really cool thing that we're doing with the How to Hire the Best course is we have live Q&A. Caitlin and I are going to be on the live Q&A with you. So you come once a week, you're listening to the course material, you're taking the action steps, and then you have us to ask all kinds of questions around hiring, retention, leadership development, A player development plans. We're going to be there to support you and help guide you through that. So that's what's in the How to Hire the Best course. You can register at tapthepotential.com forward slash course. We can't wait to see you in there and support you in hiring your A players. Caitlin, any final thoughts as we wrap up? No, thank you so much for having me. It was incredible to share some of the great insights and latest trends in workforce. And I do hope that we will be seeing you at our next How to Hire the Best. Absolutely. And head on over to tapthepotential.com forward slash course, and get signed up, and then we'll see you in the course. Thank you for spending time with me today. Join me in our Tap the Potential Mighty Networks community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Isn't it time you take your life back? And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up, keep moving forward. You got this.